Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Guys, my name's Jack and if you're new to the channel, all we do is work on Volkswagen ship boxes and occasionally you'll see this little Honda S2K sitting here in the background. But I've been like hit and miss on projects, not projects, hit and miss on videos and I'm sorry. I just, this place takes up so much more of my time than I thought it would. Like as silly as that, I guess it's not really silly. See my mess from today. This was just from today doing, making, not the beam, but making that thing work again. Oh, hold on. We got a box here. Oh. All right. Now that we're done extraining ourselves, the shop is taking, it takes a lot of my time. Uh, way more than it did like when I was back at the farm and I should have known this, like, it, here nor there, I could digress a whole, like 20 minutes probably into it. But all I'm saying is, I'm sorry. I haven't been working on the thing. The thing that kind of like pushed me in a weird way. I, I've been neglecting my girl. And yes, I've drove it. Now that we've drove it, we gotta refine it because we got over the first hump. If you didn't see this thing getting driven, um, I'll cut a clip in here. All right, so now that we've got the first drive clip out of the way, for those who didn't see it, now you've seen it, now you know. Where do we stand? Well, first, we've ordered some parts for it. Uh, we got, sort of gotten aligned. Is like here nor there. It's, the alignment is irrelevant at this point because it's all, it's missing. Like, the steering rack is completely missing out of it. Why? Well, that's because of a few reasons. One, I gotta put power steering to it, and two, you completely disassembled like all the attached bits when I was mounting it and mocking it in the car. Um, so I've seen a lot of people on Instagram, a lot of YouTubers, um, a lot of different fabrication channels use this very exact pump to uh, power their power steering. I've been debacling this back and forth, back and forth, and one of the things that this car is being built for is I want to go try Pro Spec. I want, I want to go compete in Pro Spec. So in my mind, I think I mentioned this a long time ago, like. In order to have a air quotes race car, like race car type things, in case you didn't know, Audi Victory, IMSA. Yeah, that happened here. Um, it has to pass it has to pass some sort of sanctioned tech. However, if you look up the dictatorial definition of race car, it's a car built to do a certain job. So, car built, certain job, go compete in prospect. So that said, why did I tangent about FD? Why did I tangent about this? It's because of a particular rule that they have in the FD book, where in the FD prospect rules, where you have to run a stock column and a stock pedal box. That's not that big a deal, but it does make my plans change. So originally I was gonna run an electric steering conversion out of a Cobalt SS uh, or an Equinox or an Ion. Um, it, the the list is pretty endless and basically it's an electric motor that goes in the middle of your steering shaft Which would have been cool because I could have just hung it put u joints on it attached a steering wheel and been fine Right. Well, not no more in this case now But because I have to use a stock column it kind of limited me in how do I p feed the thing now? Some would say hey, why don't you just use a GM power steering pump? That's fine. I could have done that. Honestly, what it comes down to was kind of a little bit of uniqueness, a little bit of I like headaches, and a little bit of I think this is a really clever idea to solve a problem, and I don't want to have to deal with a power steering pump all the way down there. So, insert the Ford Mazda Volvo power steering pump. Like, this is oh, electric over hydraulic. Um, it has CAN connections, which you can do. Basically, you hook those two wires up to a potentiometer and boom, you can get speed control out of this. Or you can hook it to an ECM that has steering input, steering controllers. I don't know how that would work. I haven't figured it out yet. Or you can do it the way I'm gonna do it. And basically that is put these two wires to power, power and ground, and then this one to a trigger. And the thing defaults automatically to like full power. So boom, power steering, right? Um, what else is new? Oh, that's not new. So why did I turn the camera on? Well, that's, ooh. Hope you guys didn't hear that. 
Anyway, this fancy box. Some of you guys might not know, but the car for the longest time did not have any sort of suspension. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uno momento. I need a drink. Oh, so the car for the, ah. <clears throat> so the car for the longest time did not have any real air quotes suspension on it. What it had was basically stock stuff, right? Like whatever I had laying around. I, so when I had to move the car, I ended up fabricating this kind of like hodgepodge in here, which basically is a BMW coilover with some welded bits on the bottom down here, and then a highly modified tower support topper hat bit, which is basically trimmed and cut a lot. And then the coilover with whatever spring rate it had and jacked up all the way. And in the back, it's stock. It's just a factory coilover, nothing. And in the back, it's just a factory coilover, nothing special, right? Fast forward, two months ago, rewind, fast forward to two months ago, yeah. We drove the car, drove it on this. Absolutely kind of shit, never, like, by drive, I mean, I think I did 15 miles per hour and I did not, like, I got to get a little, but that's about it. It was only because I hit a puddle and I have a 3,000 RPM limit. That's on purpose for the record. So why are we here? Because I've already wasted, so I've kind of already wasted like three minutes of your guys' life at this. And uh, you're probably asking, why are we here? Let me show you. Oh, wow, look at these guys. Oh, those are nice. They thought about you in the back. That's hilarious how long they are too. These are the extensions for the back coilovers, which actually are, right here these i found them on ebay they're called rev 9 i don't know if they're good bad or indifferent but here's the way i look at it something is better than nothing i was gonna order bcs and i'm gonna be frank i didn't have bc money along with all the other things that i need for this car it's not like i need a ton but i do need a few things that are very we'll just call it strategic purchases to make things functional for instance, a windshield. Now there's a few things I noticed about these just from the get-go when I was looking at the images. First off, the clasp that actually holds the coilover, it clamps it in place, has a uh, bolt through style design. And my thought was if I screw it up, if it gets over torqued, if it, if it, if it, I could always go back in and probably put a bolt on the back of there. So that was plan, that's that concept. I needed a coil that actually had a small cylinder, like a small spring size on it. Something that had a small spring. So, insert the fronts. Now the fronts are cool for a couple reasons. And this is what, this is just my thought on it. You know, I'm sure somebody's gonna have their own take on this and be like, yo, you're an idiot or whatever. But here's what I thought. Fronts, a little weird looking, ain't it? That's why I ordered it. No, I didn't order it because it was weird looking. I ordered it because of the way it was designed. So obviously here's the top, but on the bottom is where my adjusters are. And I thought that was really, really clever because here's what I get to do. The problem that we have the most here is that in our cars, we don't have adjustability from the top. There's no real way to get to it unless you did what I did here and cut a hole in it. BC solved that problem by putting their adjuster right up here, little click, click, click. That still, for the most part, is gonna require you to take the tire off. If I'm at the track and I want a couple clicks here, a couple clicks softer or, you know, a little harder or a little softer, I don't necessarily want to have to take the tire off if it's an easy adjustment. So what's cool about these is that it's down here below and I should be able, even with the tire on, I should be able to get my hand in there, make some small adjustments if I need to or want to and get right back on the track. I'm just gonna put this out in the street. I know I've needed coilovers for a long time. I know these aren't the most expensive things out in the sun. I know they're not BCs or Olins or x y or z but the reality is the project that i this project as it sits has been an air quotes budget build i've honestly refused to add up the total because i don't know what it is but i've been committed to doing this and i'm a firm believer if you're going to start something finish it and i'm going to finish it no matter what but that said i still have to keep the lights on we'll trim the budget where we have to to get the thing done I'm still very particular about what I order because I'm intrigued about certain things. So 
I've already technically opened the box and shot this after the fact, so if it doesn't line up, you know why. Let's get back to where I was going to do before I cut in and did the thing after the thing. Ciao. They have this cute little sticker on him. It says, spring rates preloaded from factory. Don't adjust. Yep, that's going to get changed. All right. I don't know. Let's just send it and see what happens. Oh. I'm going to be real here. I'm a little concerned about, like, how low out of the box is. So we're going to raise this thing up probably. I think I raised it up like an inch, inch and a half. Oh. All right. We'll find out. Let's... The plan is we'll just set the new ones to match the length of the original factory car, technically S6, I know, but we're gonna match the factory heights and lengths and all those things to an OEM one. That was really, really close and eyeballed. Maybe I did that next to a factory one. I don't think so because either way it works and we'll do the same thing for the back and that should get us at least to a stockish ride height, you know? It might be a little bit lower because the spring rate might be lower than this. I don't know. I honestly don't remember what the socks, what the rates are of this thing. Um, shit. I don't even know. Oh, well, we'll figure it out. Well, front done. We're not going to drop the car down yet though, because I just was thinking about it and I've got the car up in the air already. I guess technically I need to put the car back up in the air anyways to do this other thing. So we'll probably, yeah, maybe we'll just wait till then. I was thinking about going ahead and putting in my Canton Racing oil pressure, Canton Racing AccuSump self. I can't even think about what it's called. Basically, this thing shoots oil into my engine for me automatically as long as I hit the switch on the dashboard. If hypothetically the oil pressure gets too low. Now that I think about it, I should probably wire an LED in here to let me know when it's doing its thing. Well, I mean, I have a gauge, so I guess we'll be all right. So what does this do? Basically, that thing goes down there. You know what? Not even gonna get into it. We'll get into it next time when we install it because I will install it. Probably go ahead and install it when I lift the car back up. So let's uh, let's get this thing down and do the back. Day two. Oh, all right. Well, it's day two of this little project I've been going on here. We're doing the coilovers, in case you forgot in the midst of the same video that I've technically just, we, yeah, it's whatever. Anyway, where did I leave off last night? Cause I probably had a time lapse running and I forgot where I was. We were drilling holes in there to put these lines right here, whoop, through there. That's what we were doing. And then I got upset because I tried to squeeze my head in this little bitty hole by accident. Got a noggin right there, a little thumper. Did you see that one? Look, I told Colton I look like him now. I got a little knock. Yeah. Why'd you do that to yourself? I, it was an accident. Like I just instinctively tried to shove my head in a small hole. What you doing? Oh, I was I was playing around to see whether or not I could route this flipped and I could not. Nah. So now I'm choosing between if I want to go between going whoop or whoop. I'm actually kind of liking this I like better. that better. Then I can make it trace with this. I can do all kinds of stuff with yeah, that. Yeah, I like that way better. Yeah. Because then you could also take that zip tie and go around there and it'll just keep that line from vibrating. Dig it. All right, you back to your thing. I'm going to do my thing. All right, so the goal tonight is to get these coilovers finished. We had a kind of did a spent the first half of the day doing a clutch shop thing. So coilover time. Let's get it done. And like the fronts, we're going to go ahead and set the factory height to match the factory height of a OEM one. But we're going to leave the preload alone because these had a clever little sticker on them that said don't adjust. They're set from the factory. So for humoristic sakes and science, Juan's got scales and we're gonna throw this thing on a corner balance after we're done, because A, we have to do it. Right, we have to do it, it's illegal uh, not to. We'll get arrested at Cherry Berries, we'll get to talk to our favorite Wentzville enforcement officer. Because we didn't corner balance it? Mm -hmm. I like it. The same dude, he's gonna be like, all right, well, you took care of your business licenses, but I haven't been <laughs> corner balanced so far, so. Let's get to it, enough jibber jabbering. Let's drill some holes.
Oh, maybe that'll work. We'll figure it out here. We'll stick it up here and see what goes on. So what was I gonna talk about? So these Rev9 coilovers. This is not necessarily specific to these, but it is specific to like this style of a extension cable. S on these, this one ended up, I guess somehow it wasn't seated all the way or it wasn't torqued down all the way. And they have Loctite on these, these little set screws in there, right? Sometimes they'll put Loctite on them. Clever little hack with Loctite is if you heat it up, it becomes soft and it's at like, Different Loctites do it at different temperatures, but if this one is like a red or anything like that, it's like a little over 200 degrees, if my memory serves me. My point here is, is, don't burn yourself. Don't ruin that little itty itty bitty, like Allen in there, because we all know we have. Get your torch, put it in something, and just heat it up. Preferably one with a little bit more gas in it. 20 minutes later. This is literally on its last leg. <laughs> Fighting my patience right now. How much longer do I want to wait? Let's we'll see if we can. We'll do a touch test. And still kind of touch it. It's not that hot. I'll give it a little. See if this is enough. Oh, it was enough. It's coming loose. There we go. I want to take it all the way out. Don't lose this thing though. Like seriously. All right. Now to. Redo the thing that caused this whole thing to go down this way. <laughs> it's a little bouncy. It's okay. We can deal with it for right now. It's on the ground. It's on coilovers. All right, for full aesthetic. A functional appeal here. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. <sighs> We're gonna have to cut a lot of this out of here. The back, that looks really good. For air quote stock height, that's about where it was beforehand. Um, before we ventured down this path of coilovers, I had the car jacked up super high just so like, I could get it to clear things. I need to readjust the, I need to, I need to completely rework my exhaust system. That thing is complete and utter crap, but we gotta get the body on it. We need to make some taps for the dashboard. Those are the next couple things that are probably on my list of shit is body panels, hood, start. I gotta start tidying up loose ends. And we, oh, nope, I thought that was the car. Unless they got it on a little bitty trailer, that's not them. So guys, this has been a journey. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. All I'm trying to do every time I turn this camera on with this car is get one project completed and the project was coilovers it's on i do a lot of diys on the channel and i'll be frank they get really tired i get really bored of editing them so this is something a little bit more fun and jazzed up and hopefully you guys will like it if you do get down in the comment section let me know you know if you like seeing this sort of content and i'll just keep making more of it because that's what you guys want to see right the DIYs are fun, don't get me wrong, I do enjoy them, and I really believe in the educational aspect of YouTube. I think that there always needs to be that aspect of it, and I think there also needs to be the highs and lows of it also. As a cre air quotes creator, I guess, technically, I think that being honest and real with you guys as much as I can with the headaches and the trials and the BS, because things aren't air quotes easy, they are difficult but they can be made easier if you have, sometimes have a helping hand along the way. So, like I've said this time and time again, there's nothing, there is nothing that is impossible as long as you think it's possible. So, thanks for watching guys, thanks for subscribing, I'll see you in the next one, peace, I'm Audi. <laughs>